Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. This is hour number two of Tuesday. We're joined in studio by DarkHorsePressNow.com's very own Miss Therese April. Hello, everyone. Hello. And this segment is brought to you by Take a Break Deliveries, locally owned, veteran owned food delivery service. But there's so much more than food now. They are packaged. They do all this stuff now. You know, they got the Take a Break Deliveries convenience store. Mm hmm. They have access to liquor stores. If your area has a liquor store, you can get liquor delivered there. And so much more. I mean, they are really expanding this thing. Mm -hmm. They're in Florence. or They're in Byam now, too, right? I think. I think so. Clinton. You know, so they, they've really expanded this thing. It's growing. And look, I mean, we, I couldn't be happier. We use it a good bit. And I tell you all the time, download the app. There's a discount code. They send a promo code. They send out every day to save a, about $3, sometimes more. Yep. Off your delivery fee. Sometimes they do up to $5. Mm -hmm. You never know when. Right. So just have the app and get the notifications. But, you know, that really makes it worth getting it delivered when you Absolutely. get $5. You get $5 off a $4 delivery fee. You know, it, it makes a big difference. Yep. So <clears throat> check them out. Uh, Teresa, have you gotten anything delivered lately? Well, um, I last been out week. Of town, yeah, but. I was just trying to remember what I ate last week because I know I used it like two or three times last week. But, you know, my favorite thing about it is, like you said, you know, it's you've got this discount every day. But also, you know, we've talked about how the people that bring it are just really delightful people. And sometimes, if things are crazy, it might even be the owner himself because this is a locally owned and operated, you know, and, and he actually wants his customers to be not just fine with what they got, but happy with their order. Yeah. I mean, look, I, one of the questions I get asked the most about online is people asking about what's the name of that delivery service you talk about? <laughs> Download it now. Take, Take a, a break. break. Deliveries. Yes. And uh, go follow them on social media. They share all the same stuff there. Even if you don't want to commit to an app on your phone or whatever, go to take a break deliveries dot com or Facebook or Instagram and they post all the promo codes there as well. You will not be disappointed. All your favorite locally owned and national chains are on there. So mm -hmm. uh, there's very little I've looked for that wasn't there. And if it wasn't there, I, there was another version of it that I was just as happy with. Right. So, uh, you know, especially like a. Asian stir fry type stuff, hibachi to yeah. go. All that good stuff is on there. I came so close to getting that yesterday. Really? And just ended up going with Sonny's Barbecue. And I just ran, I was going to be passing right by, so I just stopped and picked it up. But I almost got some OEC delivered. I was you know kind of craving I that love, for some reason. I love ordering OEC because that box weighs like 10 pounds when it gets oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a, a, a tenth of a pound of meat and nine and a half pounds of rice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that. Yeah, me too. I mean, rice is very deceiving. It's why so many Asians are thin. Yeah. I think they get full on rice, and it is heavy on the carbs. But if you're burning it off and mm -hmm. you know working in rice fields or whatever it is they do, was that racist? I don't. I'm not comfortable with it. <laughs> anyway, whatever they used to do. <laughs> <laughs> Stay locked in their houses from COVID. Yeah, we well, all had to do that for a minute, didn't oh, we? Oh man, I hate it for them. You know that. All joking aside, I apologize if that was racist. Asian people listening. Um. They they were really scared of this more so than, and I guess it's scared of is the only way to say it, because some of these Asian restaurants are just now letting people back inside. Oh, yeah. I mean, they really held out and stayed closed and and did not did not want to be around people. But heck, I remember before the pandemic, just being in the car business or in retail, you know, when, when you would get some Asians here and there, and I mean ones that were not, not half Asian American, I mean, like, people that had lived in in china or japan wherever and yeah. came here they would come to the car lot with their mask on and you're like what are y'all doing well but you know for what it's worth i was in north carolina well, now i still ask everybody what they're doing wearing their mask right. but it's not right. exclusive i was in north carolina this weekend and people are still wearing their masks pretty pretty much up there um of course we were walking in and out of a you know rehab facility and it's a rehab nursing assisted living type place so we were in and out of there, and you saw a lot of masks in there. But, you know, just even – and this is Asheville, which is a pretty liberal city, but still there were masks everywhere. And uh, and it was just kind of weird because you have that feeling like, am I the jerk? You know, like, should I put a mask on? Well, you know, so I've a, I like the Ramey's grocery store in downtown Brandon. I know the people that – some of the people that work there, and I just like the grocery store. It's not as hectic as, as Kroger, but Kroger mm -hmm. is right by the house. Yeah. And so, especially if it's a peak traffic time, and I don't want to battle going through downtown Brandon, I'll, I'll go to Kroger. And Kroger must be where the few uh, liberals um, in the Brandon area shop at. 
because I see more mask in there than anywhere else. And I'm like, guys, and especially when I see, and, I, and there's a part of me that feels bad for when I see younger people outside with mask on. I just like, are you so scared? Have, have you been so browbeaten that you think you have to be outside? And it's one particular group of people, you know, that you have to be outside with a mask on or you're disappointing somebody. Are you scared of getting called out? I, it just doesn't make sense to me. So forgive me if I rock the boat for a second. Do you think they think that about those of us that carry guns everywhere? No. I mean, I would think that you have a better chance of getting shot than you do of catching COVID, depending on where you're at. Well, I mean, maybe at this point, but there was a time that COVID was killing people. And so I think it's fair to say that that there are those that look at us gun people and say, what, are you really that scared somebody's going to come shoot you? Have you ever been shot before? Just the same way we're like, well, you know, why you got your mask on? You know, so I just like to look at the different sides of the perspective. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think of a, of another version of that argument yeah. to say, well, you know, well, my my gun is protecting both of us. Your mask can protect both of us too. You know, yeah. I, I don't need to wear a mask for you to feel safe. And, <laughs> You know, I don't know. I'm trying to work through that in my head. I'll I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll come back to it at the Sorry end. Sorry to make a strange parallel there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's, I don't know, man. The, the the COVID stuff. I'm just over it, and that's why we don't talk about it much on here at all. Unless it's just some kind of crazy stuff going on out there, some overreach of authority. Yeah, that's that's my issue with all that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I guess that's what makes it hard for me sometimes to to dig my heels and to want to talk about COVID or vaccines. It's, it's if you want to go do all that, by all means. But it's when the government tries to tell you, mm-hmm. here's what you're going to give up to be safe. Sure. I don't know how cool with that. And this transitions perfectly into one of the things I wanted to talk about. Um, I think you can call both of us gun nuts, you know, to an extent. To an extent, We're yes. very pro-gun individuals. Mm-hmm. Uh, Biden's coming out, and, and I am going to drag in something political here. Oh, no. Biden's coming <laughs> out. You know, the whole gun control stuff comes up every time. Sure. You know, your David Hogs of the world resurface out from whatever rocks they've been under. And it's like, we got to have gun control. We got to have responsible gun control. Uh, the the gun show loophole, which isn't even a thing. I mean, is there, can somebody tell me what the gun show loophole is other than a saying that people use every time they want to try to do gun control? Because anytime Clay's ever tried to buy a gun and I got to do a background check, it's white. Right. But I always get the gun. You know, is without the without your uh, concealed carry permit, that's about the only fast track to being able to get a gun, right? Unless you buy from an individual. Sure. Yeah. You know, so if you're buying for somebody with a, is it FFA, is it uh, FFL? Yeah. A firearm license. Um, so unless you're buying from a gun store or somebody with a firearm license, you know, typically if you're just buying from an individual, there's no way. But I say all that to, to say this. They they love to use the phrase responsible gun control. Or responsible gun laws, whatever. Well, what is that? What What is that that we don't already have? What is it that people want? What are the expectations of gun control? Because this feels more to me like it's just a slippery slope to to gun grabbing. Well, and, and I see the, the discussion as fair when it comes to how did that 18-year-old get semi-automatic weapons that he could carry into a school and shoot, up, shoot it up. Now, should that affect me? No. If I start looking like I'm having mental issues or whatever like that, potentially an argument could be made there. But when it comes down to it, I do see a need in some of these cases where there was a glaring problem or at least like what's an 18 year old need with two of these guns or with, you know, just whatever the case may be. It's like there's some judiciousness that needs to come in at some point with some people. Well, when they talk about like red flag laws on the mental side, it's so discretionary. You know, you, I, I've called every ex-girlfriend I've ever dated crazy. You, <laughs> you know, know you, what that means, right? You're the thing in common. <laughs> I, know. I mean, so so who who decides who's, I hate to just use catch all crazy, but y'all know right. what I mean. You know, who who decides that? You know, is it, is it your political enemy? You know, is it, and I can make the same argument on the flip side, you know, about the abortion stuff. They're like, I'm probably picking the worst case scenario, right? It being politicized and red flags being used against me, just like the abortion, the pro-abortion people say rape and incest. It's probably a very small, minute amount of people that would use it against you politically, but it happens Mm -hmm. just like rape and incest happen and you would need an abortion, Mm -hmm. you know? So we got a caller here on the Mac, like a flow with phone line before I ramble too far. Hey, caller, you're on there. 
I, I think part of it is you're trying to bring rationale to an irrational argument. What they do is they just keep saying dumb stuff like the nine millimeter blew out his lungs and you know, it'll yeah. shoot thirty rounds at one second and it'll and you know, the the, the boogeyman came out from under the bed and they just keep arguing all this crap that's just not rational and eventually we give up we're like, you know what, fine. He's gotta be twenty one years old. You know, or he's gotta be Pass the PT test. We just give up a little bit just to make them shut up because they're so irrational and it's irritating. Well, you know, and that's yeah, something that's, I talk about yeah. a lot. It feels like conservatives are just the brakes to the Democrats' gas. We're never the gas for our side of an argument. We're always just let's just slow down the crazy a little bit. Right. There's not, never any pushback. Saying, you know what? That woman in North Carolina that killed the guy with a pistol who had the AR-15. Blows the whole argument of Uvalde with the cops are like, well, who's got an AR-15? We've got a pistol. We don't want to go in. We might get shot. Blows that narrative out of the water. More people. All right, tell me, what's the crime rate? Crime rate in Switzerland? It's extremely low. Every citizen is by law carrying a firearm. Hmm. Yeah, I mean. When, again, and everybody says this. This is no. Uh, this ain't no hot take from my end. If you take the guns from the good guys, the bad guys are still going to do bad guy stuff. Right. Well, well, here's the thing. How's the war on drugs going? Terrible. But you know, we continue to fight it. We outlawed we outlawed drugs a long time ago, but they're still there. If you outlaw guns, guess what? They're still going to be there. It's just the good people ain't going to have them. Exactly. I'm with you. Anyway, I'm doing you, you too. Let's jump straight to another caller here on the Mac Hiker Flowwood phone line. Hey, caller, you're on there. On the day, Clay. Hey, how you doing, brother? I just wanted to mention something to you about your your uh, your at the uh, gun show loophole. Please do. The gun show loophole is at the gun shows. They have dealers and they have non-dealers that sell guns. When you go to a dealer, you have to have a background check. You get your name called in. You make sure you're clear. You can buy a gun. At the other tables that are non-dealers, you walk up, you pay them for the gun, you walk off. That's your gun hole loophole that everybody so has a hard time getting around. If you go to a gun show and you go purchase a gun from some old man over there that has 10 guns, he's not going to do anything but give you the gun when you give him the money. Now, I don't have a problem with that or anything else because I'm a gun owner, I'm a gun toter. But a lot of people don't understand the loophole. If you're not a dealer, you don't have to do a background check. Okay, sure. well, so, so yeah. I learned something new today. I didn't know that non-dealers could set up at the gun mm-hmm. show and sell. Well, they and I, do. They I've actually had there. people tell me that they've gone to a gun show and then watching, you know, these teenagers that we're seeing all these shootings happening in Jackson. They're watching these teenagers come in and buy these guns and walk out with them. You know, sure. that's you see, see shady characters all the time going through. Oh, yeah. Good stuff, man. Well, look, I appreciate that. I'm going to dive Thank into you. that a little bit. Thanks. Enjoying your show, y'all. Keep oh, it up. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. All right, so... And, well, and that's often been a case, right? Because I've got friends who are felons that need firearms, and they can't go buy them, you know. Mm-hmm. But you you can always solicit somebody to do it for you, and we we know that's what's happening with sure. a lot of this stuff. These are kids that are paying this seventeen year old kid paying an eighteen year old kid to buy him a gun, right? I mean, at the end of the day, or walking into a gun show and buying it from a you know non dealer. Exactly. All right, we got another caller here on the Matt Kike of Flowood phone line. Hey, Nathan, you're on there. Hey man, how you doing this morning? We're good. Hey, I was gonna go back to where they keep saying how this eighteen year old get firearms. I look at it. I mean, he's eighteen. When you turn eighteen, you can join the military. They put a gun in your hand. So my thing is, if you don't want eighteen year olds to have a gun, make it twenty one to join the military. You know what I mean? Or make an eighteen year old that wants to buy a gun pass all of the things he would have to pass to get into the military. Correct. You you would have to be twenty one to join the police department, but you could be eighteen to join the military. So it's 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 a catch all uh, scenario, and I. I still look at it as being crazy of how much money all those guns cost. Heck, I'm a 40-year-old man. I can't afford all that. But he he walked in and bought well, that much ammunition and bought that much 
uh, we, had, we had a great call yesterday, and somebody said, you know, man, you're forgetting that people got $900 a week not to work during the pandemic, plus the pandemic money. Very easily could have just put that money aside and bought this stuff. And that's that's the most rational thing that I've had explained to me yet as a p- possibility yep. is, you know, you, you're 17, 18 years old with no with no bills, $900 a week piles up fast. Yep. Yeah, you know, and this guy clearly yeah. wasn't out. This guy clearly wasn't out uh, popping bottles and chasing women. You know, true. So easy to stockpile that money. You know, then you think of the lump sum payments and all that. Hey, Nathan, I got to take a break, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'll be safe. Thanks. Right, you you too. too. You're listening to the Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back. Uh, if you want to call in, talk about this gun control stuff. Six zero one eight seven nine zero 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 two is the Mac Hiker Flowwood phone line, and the Guns and Gear text line is seven six nine. Two four one one nine four four. You're listening to the Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back. America, you love your country, so it goes without saying that you also love your ride. And Auto Armor in Flowood wants to help you make that ride shine. Auto Armor in Flowood is Central Mississippi's premier automotive detail and ceramic coating shop. Servicing any type of vehicle, including ATVs, boats, and more. Need just a quick detail or paint correction? Auto Armor can make it happen. But if you're set to hit the road in a blaze of glory while flying the old red, white, and blue, Auto Armor should be your first and last call to give your ride a full ceramic coating. Auto Armor is locally owned and operated by the loud and proud American patriot, Clay Edwards. Auto Armor also proudly backs the blue, all military and first responders. So don't forget to ask for your discount. Call 601-260-0858. 601-260-0858. Or stop in today, fellow Americans. Auto Armor is located at 4394 Mangum Drive in Flowood. Online at AutoArmorMS.com. Auto Armor unapologetically American. Show with Therese April here on 103.9 WYAB. This segment is, uh, I think, no better time than to let, a, let Guns and Gear sponsor a segment, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, with all that said, with all the uh, gun grabbing that is inevitable, uh, I think now is a good time to go get what you need, and Guns and Gear is a great place right. to start. Right. Uh, located right there at 1716 Highway 51 in Madison. It, what is it? Was it Yandale Road? Is that the one, the, the crossroad always here in the commercials? Yandale, Yandale. Yeah, Yandale probably. Yeah, it's right there in that strip mall there. Um, oh, man, go by and see Hunter and the team. You can check them out online at gunsandgearms.com. And if you check out Dark Horse Press, they actually have a Guns and Gear commercial. Yes, we do. Uh, with video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, go check them out, man. They got a great stuff. And they, do all, they, they do more than just sell guns there. And one of my favorite things is there's no limit on ammo. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, too, and I know we say this about all our people, but it's because we work with all these people that are local and that care about their customers. But when you go in Guns and Gear, pretty much everybody in there is you're going to leave there feeling like they're your friend. You know, because they're they're personable. They're right there with you. If you want them to be, if you just want to browse, they're going to let you do that. If you have questions, they don't look at you like you're dumb. Um, I asked a pretty dumb question last time I was in there, um, and they just breezed right over it. Like well, so, you know, I have a saying: you don't know what you don't know till you don't know it. Right. So there's that that wasn't a dumb question to them. It's, they they learned that at some point. Yeah. And it's people who can share that knowledge with you without acting without acting inconvenienced mm-hmm. or belittling you. Yeah, that's it exactly. You know, every time I go in there and I buy something, and I've just bought ammo from them over the years, every time I go in there and buy something, I end up leaving with a hat or a backpack or mm-hmm. something. They're always throwing something at you, and it's it's very good service, man. You know, you like to be greeted when you go in somewhere. Right. You know, even if you're like, I'm just looking, but at least you know you've made some contact with somebody, so you know who works there. Yeah. It's like, okay, I, that guy said, hey, so I, if I have a question, I can go back and, and talk to him. And uh, it's locally owned hardware stores. You get that vibe when you go in there. Like They're going to help you. Well, and once they get to know you pretty well, um, there was a day I I bought a little little Beretta there. And it was the only kind they they could get hold of was the silver one. And I wanted the black one. So the thing is, they can do Cerakote on your gun. They can make it any color you want it to be. So I asked them, could they do it black? And when they brought it back, Hunter opened it up and showed me they had added just a little bit of blue to it. So my gun is one of a kind. You know, anywhere. You're nice. not going to find another one that looks like this. And uh, and that was kind of a neat, spe- you know, obviously if you don't want them to do that, they wouldn't do that. But it was it was a neat um, touch that they put on it that's like, all right, here's your gun. It's not only what you wanted, but it's a little more special. Um, and they can, I mean, they can do all that stuff. They can retool your gun. They can, you know, put it back together. If you've broken it, 
you know, that kind of thing. I know there have been the occasions where I have not succeeded in putting my gun back together correctly <laughs> i had a big old heavy duty smith and wesson i messed up one time and they can they can work with that well let's be honest you we're all better at taking things apart <laughs> than yeah. putting them putting them back together that is what separates the people that get paid to do this right exactly <laughs> from the people <laughs> from the people who don't i'm a tear upper not a put her back Me together too. <laughs> but uh so look we were talking during the break and i'm gonna be 100 percent transparent i'm not gonna try to put forth an image that i just want y'all to think of me um I've often said on gun control, this is just from a middle of the road person, Mm -hmm. which I know I come across as far right, but I'm way more in the middle. But unfortunately, people in the middle are now looked at as crazy. Right. But (laughs) I've often said about gun control, well, if I, this is just common sense stuff, right? Okay, well, if I have to do a background check to buy it new, why wouldn't I have to do a background check to buy it used from somebody? Like, I know that. As, as as gun advocates, we're not supposed to, to say that out loud. We're not supposed to think there should be any gun laws, and that, unfortunately, that's the way I'm going mm-hmm. at this point in the game. Um, but that, to me, that would be something that, that does make sense, at least on paper. I'm sure somebody can explain why I'm wrong. But it's like you need to be able to track that gun. You know, so what's the difference in an 18-year-old thug going in and buying a gun for somebody intentionally like a, a, we, in the car business, we call it a straw purchase. Mm-hmm. Doing a straw purchase for a felon or anybody. Right. It ain't got to be an 18-year-old. I'm just picking young kids because that seems to be who's doing the crime in Jackson. Right. But it shouldn't – doesn't it make sense to need to ch- at least at minimum track the firearm so we know who the owner – if it gets used in a crime and runs through this new technology like we were talking about. Right. Where they track it back, that it goes to the person who currently owns the gun. Right. I mean, that just makes sense to me because not all crimes are being committed with stolen guns. A lot are. I get mm-hmm. it. You know, burners, this, that, and the other. But that would be something that you could make make sense to me that if you're going to sell your farm and he's go through an F, somebody with an FFL license and have a background check done, et cetera. Yeah. Or if they have a concealed carry permit, boom, whatever. But, you know, it's not the it is the way it currently stands is the person, the, the person who owns the gun right now bears no responsibility for who they sell or give it to. Now, I can sit here, I can give my friend that's a felon a gun and say, here, bro, Merry Christmas. Yeah. And I, I knowingly did something that broke the law. Mm-hmm. Well, and like I, I had a gun stolen out of my house, and I'm pretty sure I know who did it. And if it's the person that I think it is, then they are definitely at least carrying it around, if not using it to you know, intimidate people or whatever like that. And it, it frustrates me that they could go sell it somewhere and that there's no accounting for it you know i mean they could take it to a a gun shop and i mean so if it's my name on it so what i could have given it to them as far as their story goes or i believe one of the stories that was told about it as we've looked into what happened to it is oh i found it on the side of the road you know there's all kinds of ways to get out of but if someone gets killed with that gun the police are coming to my door first well yeah so i'm i've never had a gun stolen so i'm i'm just assuming here if a gun gets stolen and you have the, the serial numbers and stuff, then it would show up as a stolen gun if somebody went to try to pawn it mm-hmm. or something like that. But, uh, again, if you go to sell to an individual, h- how does that individual even check to see if the exactly. gun's... And I know that if you receive stolen property, the responsibility falls on you no matter what. Right. Uh, you know, but if you don't know, if you're paying a fair market value for something, not mm-hmm. a still of a deal... Well, why would you think it would be stolen? Right. Well, and if you're just buying a gun off somebody for the sake of, like, I just need a gun to carry, I would advise that before you buy that gun, you check on where it came from. You know, I mean, generally, there's going to be people you can trust. But, you know, outside of that, if you're making the connection on social media or something like that, you know. Well, so, so as I work through this in my head out loud here, well, I guess I'd be working through it out loud, not in my head. But I have to... If I go to Guns and Gear today and buy a pre-owned gun, mm-hmm. I, I'm subject to the same background checks right. as I am on a new gun. Right. Why wouldn't that be from an individual? I just, I, I, I don't want to stifle the market or anything, but it just, that doesn't make sense to me that you can do it this way, but not this way or not this way, but it has to be this way. Mm-hmm. That should be like universal. It should be. It's harder to regulate though. And, you know, as, as. Sure. I think that's going to be the issue is that, you know, the government wants to regulate so much. Um, but when it comes to actually inconveniencing themselves, you know, then then that's not a thing. And I get that, well, you know, it's easy to say that out loud because right. then you think of, but it, that would create cottage industries of people who are just FFLs that, that transfer used firearms. Mm-hmm. But 
you have to imagine that is a huge market. There's probably more used guns sold than new ones. Right. I would assume. I, I don't know. That's just me guessing here. But Or stolen or, you know, yeah. I mean, that, that, I think the thing is it's just so hard to track one individual gun if it's not going through these channels. You know, if it is stolen or if it is given away or like I said earlier, I've got a gun that I traded to somebody and then sold to somebody else. And then years later, they gave it back to me. So that gun has changed hands four times. And uh, and still, if I shot somebody with it today, it would go back to the original owner of the gun. So, yeah, you know, well, we were talking about this this tracking technology that they have out there now, where they can, if they if police end up with say a, a stolen firearm, they end up with a firearm in the, that was in a crime, they can run it, and it automatically tells them if, assuming it's in the system or everything was tracked properly, this gun was used in X amount of crime. We can trace it back to this crime and this sure. crime and this crime. It feels like it would make all that easier. So I, I don't know. But then again, you can't have a responsible conversation, a, a reasonable conversation about this because everybody goes into their respective corners yeah. and says, well, you want to take our guns. Well, you, everybody with guns is a mass shooter. Right. Uh, so there's, there's never like a, well, what what will y'all give? What will we give? And everybody just wants to run. Like I'm sitting here telling y'all, I want to run to no restrictions. <laughs> just like with, the, I want to run to no abortion because y'all are crazy and want to push abortion all the way to post post-birth abortions yeah just like you want to take our guns in my opinion so there's never like a middle ground i think that's where we come back to the the fact that we're trying to assume or to assign rationality to something where people are so irrational yeah and and that is honestly the problem that i have with the world is that if you're somebody who's going to run entirely by party lines 100 percent, i only am this party i never disagree whatever dude i hate to break it to you you're brainwashed but the the problem that we are looking at is we have so many of those people that there is no middle ground anymore where people will meet to talk. The middle ground people, like you and I can have a conversation, but when it comes down to actually taking the people who could change things or make things better or regulate something that, you know, maybe is crazy because nobody's ever agreed before, we're just not finding leaders that will do that because the, the extreme voices are the loudest. I, I know as uh, people on the right, we like to refer to the crazy lefties as NPC bots, non-playable characters. You know, they're just all <laughs> I've interchange- never done that. <laughs> they're just all in- in- interchangeable. They, you know, they're standing with Ukraine today. They're, they're, they're fighting for abortion rights tomorrow. The next day they're, they're trying to fight for children who got killed in a, mass shooting it's like well hold, hold on you, you you can't fight to kill babies and fight to take people's guns away that kill babies meanwhile sending fighting to send guns to ukraine for them people to save themselves we call those npc bots because they just contradict themselves constantly mm-hmm. and constantly with whatever the main the narrative says but on the flip side there's conservative versions of that too absolutely they just follow the the party line, mm-hmm. whatever it is. Oh, well, Trump said we got to be mad at this today. Bush said we got to be mad at this today. We hate Muslims today. Yeah. Uh, whatever the case may be. Well, my favorite example of that is we were so mad. We were so mad at Bill Clinton. And then we elect a guy that's way more experienced in that kind of thing than Bill Clinton. And now he's the biggest, like, why can't we have him back that the right has probably ever had? Yeah, but he Besides was good, Ronald Reagan. Well, he was a but, good president, though. I mean, but see, the 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 Democrats would argue that so is Bill Clinton. It's just one of those like, well, if we were going to pull the moral card on Bill Clinton, how dare he? He took oaths before God and man. How dare he do this to his wife? How dare he, you know, take advantage of this young woman? And then we got this other guy over here with the exact same character flaws. And we're like, still, he's, you know, the next thing to the Messiah. It's just that, you know, if we're going to call one side's you know, uh, contradictions, yeah. then we got to call ours too, you know. All right, hold that thought. We're going to pick up on the other side of that because uh, that goes back to my pre given a dang era. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you're listening to The Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back with Therese April on 103.9 WYAB. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. This segment is going to be brought to you by Watkins Construction and Roofing. Check them out at Watkins Construction Inc. 
dot com and i've got my little ad read here somewhere there it is <laughs> you hear the shuffling papers I, here we are <laughs> i should have had it memorized by now and i probably do but this is i guess my comfort zone yeah. you should read it but, uh, <laughs> watkins construction roofing a roof repair can cause you a lot of stress choosing the right roofing company to repair your roof is very important most contractors will try to convince you that replacement is the only way to go and that my friends is not the watkins way they believe in an honest assessment That doesn't necessarily mean replacement. In most cases, all you need is a repair. So whether you have a leaky roof, need chimney roof repair, flat roof repair, roof water leak, shingle roof repair, metal roof repair, chimney flashing repair, Watkins Construction and Roofing has you covered. Give them a call today for your complimentary roof assessment at 601-966-8233 or check them out online at WatkinsConstructionInc.com. And we have got a caller on the Matt Kike of Flowood phone line. Hey, caller, you're on there. Hey Clay, how you doing? I'm doing good this morning. How are you? All right, you uh you had a statement about uh being able to check uh a used gun. Yes. All you got to do is uh call to your police station and get them to run a serial number mm-hmm. and that'll tell you if it's stolen or not. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. I mean I I kinda knew that. I guess my, my, my point was being that if so many people buy guns and never write down the Never write down the serial numbers. They don't get bill of sales, anything like that. That that that, that should be tightened up some. They should be able to, to track where the the gun's ownership better than we currently do. That, you know, that would be one of those meet in the middle things that I'd be willing to say. Hey, that just makes sense. Yeah, that's all I had. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right, thanks. Uh-huh. All right, we got another caller here on the Matt Kike of Flowood phone line. Hey, caller, you're on there. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Master D, uh, Clay, as an investigator, long-time investigator, legal investigator, I have found out, you know, the heart of the matter is really not the gun. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. Yeah. Oh, I, I, agree. I, I agree 100%. But, but I'm going to be a little unorthodox uh, because um, I had a family member. I have several family members that have killed people. I'm talking about, uh, but the Issue goes back to mental illness, and they in the eight in the 90s, they were putting these young boys, white and black, on this demerol and all this other psychotic mind control. You can clearly look at the gunman down in Texas, look in his eyes, and you can see mental illness. You can yeah. see, but more sinister than that, it seemed like something uh, under the surface is going on with these young men. You know, I think something. I'm going to be real with you. I think the government, a secret shadow government, is brainwashing and hip, hypnosing these young men. Because if you look at the pattern, when Donald Trump was the president, there was not one man shooting. Why is that? Well, that, and, that, that, and, uh, I, let me, let me Master I'm D, gonna, I thought I'm that too, but there was Parkland. Long. And Putin said that in America they're planning concentration camps. And all this news coming out of Ukraine, fact-checking, they've been absolutely wrong. There's something sinister here going on with these young men because, like my family member, he comes from the well-to-do uh, family. All of a sudden, he just got up one day, and he just killed two people. I mean, it's the medicine. It's the epidemic of crack. Now we're going to be dealing with crystal meth, baby. Lord help us. So I'm going to leave it at that. There's something sinister going on here, like the Manchurian candidate. Thank you, y'all. Have a good morning. Thank, Thank you, you. Well, and even if it's not a, a medical thing, I mean, the thing is, as you know, as a, as a believer, I firmly believe that evil has a grip on this world right now, yeah. and and I think that teenagers especially are susceptible because they are searching for something to relate to. So yeah, something sinister is going on. When we look, whether it's the transgender stuff that we talked about earlier, or if it's just evil in general, um, look, I am a I make conspiracy theories. Everything Master D said, I could 100% be convinced of. And those all those very same thoughts have all gone through my head. Because you just look and say, man, w- what is going on in the world? It, it tells you how off kilter we are. Because people do believe stuff like that. And it's mm-hmm. the argument is easily made for, man, there's something bigger going on. Yeah. Then, it's, then it is for it just being... Oh, well, we just live in a 24 hour news cycle. This stuff has always happened. You're just seeing it more now because you have access to information like we never had before. And I get that, but I don't feel like it. It feels like we're at a tipping point. Yeah. And uh, I do want to clear up one thing that he said. Uh, it, that was the, the Parkland shooting did happen in uh, 2018. 
So that did happen with Trump in office because I thought I kind of had the same thing. Like, well, we didn't have any mass shootings with Trump, but we did. And it was that one. And the reason I remembered it was because I remember one of the guys whose daughter got killed was wearing a Trump shirt when the news interviewed him before he knew his daughter was dead. Yeah. And a lot of people were like, oh, well, he voted for Trump. His daughter deserved to die. Oh, jeez. You know, I, I remember that in my head. Sorry. Just thinking, God, these people are so out of it. And I, I know there's people on our side that do the same thing. But it's just how toxic does it have to be? Right. Well, and I think um, if we look up mass shootings under Trump, there's going to be a lot of them. But if you're talking about school shootings, then that's going to be different. Um, Because, you know, when it comes down to it, they didn't stop. They didn't stop happening just because of the president, because most of the time they aren't controlled by the president. It's it's something personal that that leads to this kind of thing. Um, Let's see. But but the point is. You know, I I think when it comes down to it, the school shootings take on their own life because you do have people concentrated in the same place, you know, like with other mass shootings, but also their kids. And that's what really, you know, hits us all where we live. Yeah. So on the guns and gear text line, I knew that my opinions about about gun stuff would would get somebody fired up. They said uh, the gun issue is that if you can't purchase a handgun until 21, then why can you purchase a rifle at 18 if you get both in the military, which we, we, we discussed that. And it says, I listen to every show on this station, and it seems that you all want more government involvement instead of less. I don't want anyone having ability to track my gun. If I report it stolen, it's stolen, then so be it. I just, it's not about having more government control. We, unfortunately, we, we have government control. It, that is what it is. That's the way this was set up, unfortunately. Yeah. And uh, we're just kind of living in that world. I, I don't. I'm just saying that we're on, we're on a train heading down these tracks to, to more gun control. Mm-hmm. And that, and they use these situations to pull on people's heartstrings when they happen. They're like, see, see, had we had gun control? I'm just saying, based on the current situ- laws that we have, if you're going to talk about common sense gun control, well, these are things that just a common guy like myself thinks, okay, I would consider that common sense gun control, not banning a, d- a certain kind of gun or ba- banning nothing ever works. Right. You know, I'm just saying that if you... Ha- I don't think they should implement any of this. I'm just saying, if we, what are what are common sense gun controls? These make common sense to me. Yeah. Well, and if he thinks everything we're doing says we think there needs to be more government control, then that goes to what we talked about earlier, where you hear what you want to and mm-hmm. you go extreme the other way. Because yeah. we definitely haven't talked like that. No, no. no I, less is more when it comes to all that, in my opinion. I'm just saying, what do they consider? They consider taking your guns. Uh, common sense gun control, like Canada just banned handgun sales, Mm -hmm. you know, or transfers or anything, basically capping the market, as Trudeau said. And I'm just saying, well, that's not common sense. Mm. That's completely irrational. You know, like I'm just saying, these are things that I consider myself a very common blue collar individual that if you wanted to sit down and have a conversation, that would be a common sense place to start the conversation. Sure. All right. You're listening to The Clay Edwards Show with Therese Apel. We'll be right back on 103.9 WYAB show this last segment of the day brought to you by lakeland glass and tent where quality matters they're back open today they were closed yesterday to memorialize memorial day Mm -hmm. or to honor memorial day and uh they're back rolling so if you need your car windows home or business windows tenant give them a call 601-946-1000 of course if you need windshields or your logo put on your vehicle wrapped any of that good stuff man they're offering a great wide variety of services over there now check them out online lakeland glass and tent Dot com And on the Guns and Gear text line, uh, the guy followed up and says, y'all definitely said you would be for tracking person-to-person gun sales. I'm just saying I wouldn't be against it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like I, I, you can make that make sense to me because it does make sense to, to track who's got the gun in case they kill somebody with it. Yeah. Who do you track it back to if it ends up illegally? Not everybody that buys a gun is a great person. So good guy A may go buy the gun from the store. Right. Sell it to good guy B, who may gift it to a kid that ends up broke and sells it to bad guy C. Right. And then so on and so forth. I'm just saying, if you wanted to start a conversation, I would start it there, not banning guns. Yeah, and I think, I mean, in the caller's def- or the texter's defense, like there are people that believe that it doesn't matter if somebody dies because of that gun as long yeah. as my rights are protected. 
Um, and, and if that's the way you feel, then your priorities are different than mine, but it's all the same. I mean, I, I'm not going to fight about it. And, and I'm not even saying it because the, my issue isn't with the gun, by no means. It's so you can track the person who had the gun. So, oh, hey, we have this new technology that tracks, you know, gun violence. Here's the last person this gun was registered to. Yep. It should be the person that it was actually using it. That's all I'm saying. Therese, thank you. Great show today. Mm -hmm. All right, Mike Madison up next. I'll be back tomorrow. Podcast will be available shortly at clayedwardshow.com. Thanks for listening. Tune in tomorrow at 7 a.m. as the Clay Edwards Show discusses all that is going on in and around the city of Jackson. This concludes our broadcast day. Right here on 103.9 WYAB.